right, well, good morning, church. Welcome to Vision Church. Uh, my name is Pastor Nathan. Uh, I'm the pastor here at Vision Church, and we're so happy you're joining us. We know it's cold, so if you're watching from home, we're happy you're joining us as well. This is Graham, my son, Graham Henry Jackson, and so it's his first Sunday here, so I had to match him. He, he was dressed first, and then I got dressed after him. And I'm so excited today because I'm going to be back preaching, but also we have Ben and Haley Adelini. They're amazing. If you don't, haven't heard them, you're about to, and it's going to blow your mind. But uh, they are so good, and they're just great people. And so welcome them. Sing along with them as you have in a worship because it's going to be really, really powerful as we jump into Galatians 3 today. So let me pray and just welcome the Lord into this place. Father, we thank you, God, that you are here right now in this place. God, that you want to move in our midst, that it's not that just you are here, but you want to be here. God, that you have a purpose to be here, that we should never meet with you and leave unchanged. And so, God, I'm asking that you would change us today, move in our hearts. Even if we're watching from home, God, we know your spirit is there. So, God, move in us, change in us, move in this place. Convict us, God, where we need conviction. Give us hope where we need hope and joy in our hearts as we sing these lyrics to these songs, God. And as we worship, God, just let us encounter your presence today. We thank you for what you're doing here. We thank you for Ben and Haley, God. Just ask that you would bless them and their family. And we're so thankful that they would come and help us out like this. And so, God, we just ask that you would move in this place. Have your way. We are yours now, God. We surrender to you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Suddenly articulate And with a thousand tongues To live one cry And then from north to south And the east to west We hear Christ be magnified And when the whole earth echoing his eminence, his name would burst from sea and sky, and then from rivers to the mountains and tops, each he cries, be magnified. Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus this morning. Oh, Christ be magnified. We're singing, oh, Christ be magnified. Just let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. We're singing, oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. And Christ be magnified. Me. Be magnified, be exalted today, Jesus. Oh, every creature finds its inmost melody, and every human heart is native cry. And then in one in rapture in the praise we'll see Christ be magnified. Oh, be magnified, Lord. We're singing, oh, Christ be magnified. Just let his praise arise. And Christ be magnified. Hear me, we're singing, oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified in me. Be lifted up today. Come on, let's remind ourselves of why we came today to lift up, to exalt the name of Jesus, amen. Come on, God, we're here for you. Lord, we're here for you and nothing else. 
Father, would you come inhabit the praises of your people this morning as we cry out. Father, we're desperate for you today. Lord, you are worthy. Father, you're the only name found worthy of our praise. We love you in this place, Lord. We exalt you in this place. Be lifted up today, Lord. Lord. Call me magnify, Jesus. Jesus, Lord. I won't bow to idols, say. And I won't bow to idols. I stand strong and worship you. And if it puts me in the fire, I'll rejoice because you're on it too. I won't be formed by feelings. I'll hold fast to what is true. And if the cross brings transformation, you can't hang me there with you. Cause death is just its own way into resurrection life. And if I join you in the suffering, then I'll join you when you rise. And when you return in glory with all the angels and the saints, my heart will still be singing. My song will be the same. We're singing, oh, Christ be magnified. Just let his praise arise. And Christ be magnified in me. We're singing, oh, Christ. Altar of my life, Christ be magnified. Yeah, sing it again. Oh, sing it. Oh, Christ be magnified. Just let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. We're singing. Oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified in me. Be magnified, be magnified today. If you know it, can you sing it out with me this morning? And I Miracle work, 
promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are you are lord you make miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who He's touching every heart, and I worship you, and I worship you. You're healing every heart, and you are here, healing every heart, and I worship you. Boy, you're turning lives around, you are here. Turning lies around, and I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending every eye. I worship you. I worship you. You are the way you make miracle work. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are the way you make miracle work, promise keep. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are, you are, you are the way you make miracle work, promise keep. Light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. And that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are, and that is who you are. That is who you are, and that is who you are. That is who you are. It's who you are. Come on, can we let them a shout of praise this morning? You guys believe that, that he's good, that he's faithful? talk a lot about this here but I know that we do a lot at our church but I think that there's power when you come into the alignment with God and one who he says he is and who we know him to be in that declaration you know so there's there's power in declaring who God's character is even if you're not feeling like that that day but sometimes what I find is when I start stepping into that alignment of who God says he is and who I know him to be in that character, even if I'm not seeing breakthrough in those certain areas of my life, it's those areas of my life I need to be declaring that. Does that make sense? So if it's your finances, if it's your family, if it's depression, if it's anxiety, if it's addiction, it's those areas that we need to come in and declare God's goodness and faithfulness and favor and his steadfastness in our lives and his grace. Come on. I can't tell you how many times I've been hungry for the presence of the Lord and feeling so distant from Him and not feeling Him. And this, this, this bridge comes back every time. So I'm going to give you a challenge this week. If you're going through your week and you're not feeling the Holy Spirit and you're feeling really distant to seeing these words as an act of declaration of even when we don't feel him, God isn't dependent on our emotions to move, you know? So I, I'm challenging you this week as you step out through your ministry throughout the week and your witness to others. If you're not feeling the presence, just continue to pray this declaration over you. And I promise you, he's gonna show up in mighty ways. 
Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel that you're working, you never stop, never stop working. We believe it. Even when I don't see that you're working, even when I don't feel that you're working, you never stop, never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. And even when I don't see you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you work. You never stop, never stop working. Oh, the way you make a miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you always The way you make a miracle work. Promise keep light in that is who you are. One more time. You are the way you make a miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. The way you make a miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Perfect Father, the perfect Father, the faithful friend, Lord, you never let us down, you never will, you've always been faithful, always been good, you're so good to me, Jesus, come on, has he been good to you, has he been faithful in your life, Jesus, you're worthy. Oh, even when I didn't see it, you were working, Lord. Because oh, that is who you are. And that is who you are. That is who you are. Perfect one, that is who you are, and that is who you There's a grace when the heart is undefined Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire Standing next to me, there was another in the waters holding back the sea. And should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free, there is a cross that bears the burden where another died for me. There is another in the fire. All my dead left for dead beneath the waters. I'm 
no longer a slave to my sin anymore. And should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning, either way I won't bow to the things of this world. I know I will never be alone There is another in the fight Standing next to me There is another in the waters Holding back the seas and Should I ever be reminded What power set me free There is a grave that holds no body and now the power lives in me There is another in the fire oh, There is another in the fire oh, There is another in the fire oh, There is another in the fire I can see the light in the darkness as the darkness bows to Him. I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between where it's thin. And I can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in. And nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between us. There is no space between us. I don't normally talk this much, but... <laughs> so I, this last year I started a nonprofit that works um, in the anti-sex trafficking field. And uh, every time we make steps forward, there's intense spiritual attack, whether it's on me or our family. And it's been really challenging to me in this season of like, okay, I think there's always a time when you receive that, you wanna question, you know, am I walking in the will of God and am I getting, or am I getting pushed back because I'm actually doing the Lord's work, you know? And, and what really stood out to me in this last year was, I wanna live a life that say, you know, we're doing so much ministry, we're making breakthrough, we're seeing th miracles happen, and we're starting to, to, to break these bondages of in the, in the most intense darkness that you can imagine. And have I not lived my life enough, like in the, <laughs> the Lord's path enough to not receive spirit, this much spiritual attack before? And so now I'm starting to look at it a lot differently, like God calls us to the fires. He doesn't say there won't be fire. He says he'll stand there with you in it. So are, are we living our lives with total reckless abandon in his will enough to be spiritually attacked because we're stirring stuff up? And that, that convicted me a lot. But I wanna tell you that even in working in that field and seeing things that I couldn't tell you about, that God will stand with you in the fire. And I've seen him stand in the fire with women who have endured more suffering than is imaginable. And I don't know what fires you're standing in today or what waves feel bigger than your top of your head, but God is going to be there with you in it. And all you have to do is call in the name of our sweet Jesus and he will be standing there with you and you will not burn. So dear God, we come humbly before you this morning, Lord, bring convictions in the areas of our life that we need it, Lord, that we're needing boldness to step out in you, that we even welcome the attack and we welcome the suffering and we find joy in the suffering because we know that that's where you'll be, that we wanna be in such close proximity to you that we don't care what it's gonna look like but we just crave you so badly that we're willing to step into the fire voluntarily, Lord, just to be standing there with you and to see your glory. And 
sing this last verse. There's no other name. There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. He was and still is and will be through it all. So come on, may in the space between all the things unseen in this reckoning. And I know I will never be alone. Sing it again, I know. And I know I will never be alone. Come on, declare it. I know. Oh, and I know I will never be alone. Sing it again. There'll be another in the fire Standing next to me There'll be another in the waters And holding back the seas Yet should I ever need reminding Could you have been to me? I'll count the joy come every battle Because I know that's where you'll be I can see the light and I can see the light in the darkness. And I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between where it's thin. And I can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in. And nothing stands between us. Oh, nothing stands between the another. Standing next to me, there'll be another in the waters, holding back the seas. Should I ever need him, mind? How could you've been to me? I'll count the joy come every battle, because I know that's where you'll be. I'll count the joy come every battle. Because I know that's where Right there with me The joy come every battle Because I know that's where you me And God, you're so good God, you're so good God, you're so good, you're so good to me. Sing it again, just the voices. God, you're so good. Come on, lift it up. And God, you're so good every season and God you're so good you're so good to me and God you're so good you're so good to Father, we thank you for your goodness. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness this morning. Father, we can see your hand working throughout our lives, and we thank you. Father, we can rest assured that even when we can't see it, you're working. Lord, we know that you're good. Lord, and you've never let a promise fall. Lord, you fulfill every word you speak. And we thank you for being so good to us, even when we don't deserve it, Father. That you love us deeply enough to shower us in your grace and your mercy and wrap us up in your love, Lord. We thank you. Father, I just ask you to bless this day. Lord, that you'd be glorified in this service. 
Father, that your name would go out and be exalted first and foremost. Lord, no matter what happens throughout our week, God, throughout the rest of this service, throughout this day, that your name would be lifted up in our lives, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You guys can be seated, I think. Paul, an apostle, not from men nor through man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren who are with me, to the churches of Galatia, grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Well, hey, church, it's so good to be back up here preaching, and so I just want to thank Ben and Haley so much. I mean, come on, just leading us into the presence like that. I'm telling you, we are primed and ready to dive into God's Word now. Uh, I hope that you feel that. I hope that you feel like your heart is softened over whatever's happened in the last week that's hardened you a little bit, and maybe it's just the cold that you're just like, man, I just feel so hardened and I'm grumpy. Uh, let your heart be softened by the words that we sang and makes it really easy to preach God's Word whenever you're just recharged like that. I don't get to do that much where I get to sit and worship and then step up here. So it's amazing. So thank you, Ben and Haley. That was just beautiful. Uh, if you would turn to Galatians 3 in your Bibles, um, as you do that, let me just say I want to thank you for letting me have a couple Sundays off to acclimate to fatherhood. Uh, it was a uh, amazing just to have that and for you guys just to be okay with us bringing other people in and, and everything. I was so thankful to have Adam Lewis with us and Amber and it's uh, it's just so nice to have those couple weeks just to rest and just be like, oh, so I'm tired all the time now. That's just what happens. Uh, but it's uh, it was really, really great and Graham is amazing. He's here and I'm so happy Nikki got to come uh, come back to church, and Nikki and I are just so blessed. We're blessed with a son. We're blessed with a church family that just loves us and cares for us, so thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I really mean that. A short recap in our Galatians series, because we took a couple weeks off of Galatians. So Paul is writing to the church in Galatia, and he's doing it to refute the false teachers that have crept into the church. And so if you remember what we were talking about, uh, Paul plants the church in Galatia, they're thriving, they're new, they're blowing up, and he's like, it's all about God's grace, and then he leaves because he's got ministry to do, and some, what, what they call the Judaizers come in, and they're like, hey, we're cool with Jesus, like Jesus is cool, we're, we're down with that, we want to worship Jesus, talk about Jesus, that's awesome, but you also need to follow the Jewish customs. So there's circumcision, and there's dietary laws, and these things, and so they're looking at these Gentile converts that are, that are getting saved in the name of Jesus, and they're saying, okay, that's great, but you're not really saved until you start doing these things. And that makes Paul a little angry. When he gets word of that, he's like, he starts writing a letter back. He's got his person there, and he's, he's probably verbally speaking it as his person is trying to write this letter, and they're like, slow down, Paul. He's like, I'm not slowing down, because i, I got to get this to them, that they're, they're following false teachers. False teachers have crept into the church and they're saying that it's not just Jesus alone that you're saved. It's not by grace alone that you're saved, but it's by Jesus. And then you've got to do some stuff to earn that. And Paul says, that's a problem. That's a flawed uh, uh, faith. That's a flawed religion to think that I have to do something extra to make God love me. Paul's like, that's not what you guys should know. I've preached to you the cross. I've preached to you grace. You need to know better. You cannot believe these false teachers. Paul spends this whole letter of Galatians, and I feel like it's maybe nice that we had a couple-week break because every week I'm saying the same thing because that's what Paul's saying every single verse. He's just beating it into our heads because even today in our world, we are so tempted to start listening to other voices, to start listening to our, our feelings and what we're feeling over God's Word. 
And it messes up our belief. It messes up our faith that we start thinking we got to earn God's love. And if I mess up, he's mad at me now and he hates me. And so I got to do something to make up for that. It really leads us to a rocky and a shifting uh, religion and faith. And so it messes us up. And Paul's like, I need to clarify this for us. And I think he wants to clarify that for us today as well. This is very important for our modern day because all of the world is under a do mentality. I heard Louis Giglio say this one time, and it just blew my mind. He says, our world is under a do mentality. you got to do this to be loved. you got to do this to be successful. you got to do this to be wanted and so that people want to be around you and hang around you and to get the promotion and to get the girl and to get the guy. we got to do all these things to be lovable. But the gospel isn't a do message. It's a done message. So you get it? It's not something that's not like we got to do this to earn this. It's that Jesus did it. It is done And so we have the great joy, and it's so hard for us because we're wicked sinners, we have the great joy of resting in God's work and Jesus' work on the cross. We get to rest in that grace. You hear me say that almost every week, just rest in his grace. If you're caught in sin and you're like, I don't know if I can overcome this, you're right, you can't. Rest in his grace. Jesus defeated that on the cross. Rest in the work of Jesus. Let that grace come over you and propel you to walk in holiness The gospel isn't a do message, it's a done message. So let's just jump into Galatians 3. I'm just going to read verse 1 and pray here. I'm telling you, Paul starts off strong. I said this last week when I was getting us ready for this week. He just punches us in the gut right off the bat, and I love it. Look at Galatians 3, verse 1. O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. O foolish Galatians. Galatians, oh foolish church people, I want to speak that to us. Let's pray. Father, it's already been said a couple times today, God, but we're just praying for your conviction right now. We need to change, God. We need your power in us to change us, to walk in holiness, to, to humble us and drop our pride, God, that we'd see and we'd rest in the work of Jesus on the cross, God. So we're inviting you to call us foolish today. We're inviting you to to, to give us those jabs in the sides that we need today, God, that where we've wandered off when we've believed a false gospel, when we've trusted in our own self and our own emotions more than your word, whenever, whatever we've done in our lives, God, to get off track of you and to not believe rightly in your word and in the truth of Jesus on the cross and in grace, God, give us those jabs to wake us up. That we don't have to earn your love, but you love You are love and you love us even in our mess and our sin. And whoever's listening right now in this place or online that they think they're too bad to know Jesus, they're too messed up to come to church, they're too messed up to be saved, that God doesn't want them. God, I'm praying right now that you would kill that thought right now and pour love over them, that they would experience your grace and mercy and see that they didn't earn your love, earn your salvation, but it's just who you are and you do love us. That while we were yet sinners, you sent Christ to die for us. And God, let that love that we get to rest in, that grace that we get to rest in, then lead us to walk in holiness by the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your word, God, and just ask that you would just speak through it so clearly. Let it not be me, but you speaking today. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So parents, have you ever left your kids to go in the other room for like just a minute? And you come back and it's just destroyed. You're like, I I left for like 20 seconds and everything was fine. And I come back and like the coffee table's flipped over, the mirror's broken on the wall, there's like just stuff smeared all over the wall. And you're like, how did you do this? Like your parents, some of your parents have experienced this for sure, right? Like it's like, how, how, how can you already mess this up so bad? Everything was fine. You were fine. You had your snacks. You had your Paw Patrol. Everything was good. I left for two seconds to come back and everything's destroyed and, and your brother's on fire. Like how did this happen? We uh, have experienced this a little bit with our dog. It's not the same, but I don't know how our dog can destroy things in just like two seconds. Uh, Graham isn't old enough yet, and I'm confident he will never do anything wrong, ever. Um, (laughs) He he definitely will. Uh, I feel like this is the mindset Paul has here. These are like his babies, right? Like this church, and they're growing, and they're new believers. And he's like, I left you. You got your snacks. You got the gospel. You got grace. That's all you need. So just keep meditating on that, and just keep growing, and just telling people about Jesus, and you're good. Nothing can go wrong here. He leaves, and then he hears, they're like, uh, somebody sent, like, they're Paul, uh, 
that church in Galatia, like they're smearing pudding on the wall. Like, they just messed everything up. These other people came in and was like, hey, we can do this. You don't have to do what Paul said. You can do this. You don't have to do what the God says. You can do this. And actually, you need to do all these things. And they're like stressed out and freaking out. And, like, and Paul's like, you foolish people. And actually, I, I don't like using the like, strong language like idiots or morons. But I feel like that's probably what he's thinking. is like, you morons. Like, what are you doing? You're foolish. Paul yells at them, you foolish Galatians. And then he starts firing rhetorical questions at them. I'm telling you, he fires so many questions in a row, they don't have time to respond to any of them. Anybody in here familiar with a parent or a boss asking these rhetorical questions? Have you lost your mind? Because I'll help you find it. Are you trying to make me mad? Are you kidding me? Like, they, these don't require answers, right? Are you crazy? Do I look amused? You look at your kid, it's like, do, do I look like, I'm, do I, am I laughing right now? Do I look amused? I want to speak this to us. Foolish people, who are you listening to? Who has bewitched you? He uses strong language there that would be tied in with, like, pagan and, like, really messed up, like, beliefs and stuff. And he's like, who has bewitched you? Who has cast a spell on you to make you so confused and messed up about that you are saved by grace alone? So who are you listening to? The world? The devil? Yourself? He says, no, listen to God and get in his word. So Paul fires six questions at them. I want to highlight three of them because these are the main questions that he really asks. So look at, let's look at verse 2 here. He says, let me ask you only this. This is funny because then he asks more than only this. Right? Like, let me ask you one thing, and it turns into six things. But he's like, let me ask you only this. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? I'm going to simplify this down for us to understand. This is the first point. It's a question. How did you receive salvation? How did you receive salvation? That's what Paul's asking here. He's like, listen, you're now stressed out and worried and feel beaten down because the Judaizers are saying, you've got to do all these things to make God love you. He's like, that you know better. So how did you initially receive salvation? Was it out of your good works? Was that of all the amazing things you did? Is it because you're so handsome or because you're so eloquent or you're so gifted or you have money? Is that the reason God saved you, looked at you and was like, I'm going to save him? Paul's like, how did you receive salvation See, this question helps us to refocus on what really matters. I'm going to encourage you. I'll do this at the end as well. Ask yourself these questions. When you feel like you're in a fog or you're losing focus or you feel prideful or angry or upset, these questions help to refocus us on what really matters. Did you earn your salvation? Did the Ten Commandments save you? Is your church attendance what saved you? Is your job, your money, is any of this what saves you? No. See, so many of us, are, we're just listening to other voices in our lives, and all of the other voices are saying, you got to do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. And I'm telling you, in most life, don't just do the minimum. Like, if you've got a job, be good at your job. Like, strive to be good at your job. That glorifies God, shows that you have good work ethic. If, you, if, if you're on a team and you're being coached, be coachable and work hard to try to be the best player you can be. And there's a lot of that do mentality, and those are good things. But when it comes to our faith, we've got to drop the do mentality. Yes, there's things that we do. Faith without works is dead, but faith comes first. And so we have to get this. It's not our works that save us. It's not these, the other voices in our lives telling us to do these things. And I know some of you, man, you've got to be tired. I've been there. You're, you're tired from trying to prove something to other people and to God. Tired of trying to make God love you. Well, I've got to get to church this week, otherwise he's going to be mad at me and I've got to do these things. Yeah, go to church. Read your Bible. Do your devotional. Worship. Tell people about Jesus. Do those things, but don't think doing those things is what makes God less mad at you because he loves you or makes him love you more. So you, you have these doubts in your life, and you're like, man, I, I don't know if I'm good enough. I don't know if, I'm, if I, I can really, you know, I know I maybe should pray with my coworker, but I don't know enough. And I'm telling you, ask yourself, how did you receive your salvation? Did you do something to earn it? No. Then why aren't you trusting God in the moment to get you through what you're going through? Because you didn't earn your salvation. It is all God. Paul says you're foolish. Because if you know Jesus... You've experienced the power of the cross. 
You've experienced his grace, love, and mercy. If you really know Jesus, you've experienced this grace that you didn't earn. And really understanding grace and being saved, part of that is realizing that you can't earn it and you're not good enough. That's why you need a Savior. So if you know Jesus and you have been saved, that should help us to understand how did you receive salvation? It was a free gift of God, not by works so that no man can boast. So how do we receive salvation? By placing your faith in Christ alone, not in your own strength, not in your resume, by faith in Christ alone. He moves on to the next question. Look at verse 3. We'll kind of skip the first question because he just simply says, are you so foolish? Um, So he's kind of reiterating. But then the real question, having begun by the Spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? So if... We start with the first question, how did you receive salvation? It was by grace alone, it was by faith in Christ, not of me. And he says, okay, then how do you think your flesh is going to perfect what the Spirit started? Like if God initiated salvation and saved you and it's not by your own works, then why do you think it's by your power that you can sustain it? That's the second question and the second point if you're taking notes. How is your salvation sustained? Are you the one sustaining it? Is it now that you've been saved? Is it like, okay, i got to do this stuff? i got to do all this stuff. I'm going to not cuss as much, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to walk the old lady across the street, and then I'm going to open the door for people. Like, I'm going to do all these things. I'm going to go to church. I'm, I'm going to do so then I can sustain my salvation. We're missing the whole point if that's what we think. Now, i got to keep reiterating this because I don't want you to hear me saying that you shouldn't do those things. Do those things. Be good people. Care about people other than yourself. But realize that it's not those things that sustain your salvation. It is God that holds it. He's the one that initiated it. The Spirit started it. So the Spirit's the one that sustains it. He says, are you foolish? Do you actually think it is by your power that you are perfected? It's by your power that you're sustained. It's by your power that you're sanctified through your life. I'm telling you, this question gives us so much freedom. Because Paul is simply saying that if you were saved by faith, but here you're now trying to live out your faith in your own strength, that that's actually an oxymoron. Say, I'm, I was saved by faith in Christ. Faith, but now I'm living it out in myself. See, that's what's amazing about our faith, is that the faith and then us living in our own strength, they don't go together. That's the whole point of faith, is in trusting and placing confidence Placing your confidence for your faith is placing your complete trust or confidence in someone or something other than yourself. So to say I have faith, but I'm trying to do it all in myself does not work together. I have to say if I have faith, that's me placing complete trust in Jesus to sustain me and sustain my salvation. Placing our complete trust and confidence in Christ. I love 2 Corinthians 3, <clears throat> verse 17 and 18. It says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and you all know this, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Remember, your salvation was started by the Spirit, so where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed, sanctified, into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. So the Spirit initiates salvation, and God initiates it, and it's by grace that we're saved. And then he's the one that's sustaining us and transforming us and and perfecting us and sanctifying us. It is all him. And it says when we understand that, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. I know that just even with some of us here today and watching online, that there's people here that feel like they need some freedom in their life, freedom of their sin, freedom from their self, freedom from people that outward influences in their life and the voices that are telling them to be something that they don't want to be. You're feeling all those voices. Well, get in the word and trust God's word and what he says is right and what's wrong, not what other people say is wrong, and realize that there's freedom in knowing God. Where the Spirit is, There's freedom. And if you know Jesus, you have his spirit living in you. That means that we should have freedom going through our veins, that we have freedom in knowing God sustains and empowers and transforms us. So we need the spirit of God to have his way in our lives, not what we want, not my own strength to sustain myself. And the freedom comes from the fact that it realizes when I mess up, 
Nobody here is perfect. You're going to mess up. Probably later today. You're going to do something that's sinful. You're going to have a sinful thought. You're going to lose your temper. You're going to have pride. Whatever it is, you're going to be, you're going to sin. And in that moment, if I'm sustaining myself, then I've crumbled. But if I realize it is God who sustains me, it is the Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead that sustains my salvation, it, does, it means that whenever I mess up later, that it's not that grace is out the window, it's that there's more grace on top of that to cover my sinfulness. I'm sustained by Jesus. I'm sustained by the power of God and His Spirit so how did you receive your salvation? And, and, and now how was you, your salvation sustained? Well, let's look at verses 4 through 6 here. Did you suffer so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Does he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by works of the law or by hearing with faith, just as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness? Third question simplified for us to understand, who is it that is at work in you now? So, how did you receive salvation? How is your salvation sustained? And then now, who is it that's working in you now? The convicting you, leading you, sustaining you, like we just said, what, doing good things through you. When you feel that need to care for somebody, to go out of your way and help other people, guess what? That's not you. That's the Spirit of God. That is God working in you. See, this question, who is at work in you now? This question helps us to crush our pride because we are wicked sinners and we are selfish. And this is what's amazing. We're wicked sinners and we're selfish, but God wants to work in us and work through us. I don't know about you, but God's ways are higher than my ways because if I was in charge, I'd be like, they're just going to mess it up. I'll do it myself. Like, God doesn't need us. He can do whatever he wants, right? But he receives joy and pleasure in using messed up people like us, and he receives glory from that. He's the one at work in us now. He says, does he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by works of the law? He's saying, is, it that, is God working in you only happening because you're following the law and you're doing all the things right to be a Christian and a church person? No. That God's Spirit is the one working in you. It is God's power. And He receives so much glory when He works in us. Because we can step back and we can say, I know Nathan wouldn't do that. I know Nathan wouldn't care about that person. I know Nathan wouldn't go out of his way to help this person. I know Nathan wouldn't put his stuff aside to, to, to go do that. I know Nathan wouldn't give his money to a mission. But man, the power of God... God works in us to want to do those things. So then, when there's, once again, we've got freedom because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. So now whenever I say, oh, it's God at work in me, and it's not, I've got to do these things. It's, wow, God's Spirit's working in me, and I get to do these things. I want to give my money to this mission field to help other people know Jesus. I want to rescue people out of human trafficking. I want to do these things. I want to step up for this person. I want to lay myself down and live for other people. I want, to, want people to know Jesus, not Nathan. I don't want them to see Nathan because Nathan's a mess. I want them to see Jesus. So who is at work in you now? So the good things that we're even doing right now to help others, it's God. The good things that this church does. It's not, wow, you know, Karen had a nice idea to take cards to the nursing home. That was God, God leading her. That was God working in her, right? It, it's not just us being like, hey, let's do some good things so people think Vision Church is cool. It's No, it's God working in us. It is all Him. In fact, a miracle by definition, because that's the word Paul uses, a miracle, doing miracles. A miracle by definition involves an invasion of supernatural power into a natural world. Meaning, if I'm doing it out of myself, it's a natural thing. It's not a miracle. It is when God invades supernatural power into our world to do things that we would never do in ourselves. See, we, sometimes we get caught up in miracle things. and We're like, we want to see crazy healings. We want to see the dead raised. It's like, man, I believe God can do that. But the miracle is me willing to go out of my way to take something to somebody because they can't get out. Like, you realize that that's because that's a miracle because Nathan wouldn't do that. That is the Spirit of God. He is at work in us. Look at verse 7 through 9 here. 
He starts bringing Abraham into the story, going back to the Old Testament. He says, Know then that it is those of faith who are sons of Abraham. Remember that word faith keeps popping up. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. So what does Paul want to emphasize here? Faith. He mentions faith more than Abraham, more than anything else. He's saying, like, even what Abraham was doing, even God using Abraham to be the father of the nations, right? That wasn't because Abraham was awesome. He wasn't. He was a sinful human. It was God's promise and gift and power working in him. I love that Paul uses Abraham to refute the works-based gospel. Because remember, the Judaizers, they know Abraham, and they're talking about Abraham. They've heard about Abraham. And so he's like, I'll use something you know. Let's talk about Abraham here. Did Abraham earn God's favor? Did Abraham earn the right to do what God did through him? No. He didn't earn that. He just trusted in the promise and what God said he would do. See, when God promised Abraham numerous descendants... Abraham wasn't like, okay, what do I got to do to get that? Like, where's the fine print in the contract, God? I, this sounds awesome. I want to have numerous descendants, and I want to be, you know, the father of our faith and stuff. So, like, what, where, what do I got to do? He didn't do that. He'd been walking with God, and he's like, okay. God says he's going to do it. I'm just going to trust that he's going to do it. He wasn't going to earn it. He wasn't trying to present a resume to God saying, hey, I think I'd be good to be the one that makes the numerous descendants out of. No, God says, I'm going to do this through you. And he simply had faith and believed God. I believe this would change our lives if we understood this. It would give us so much freedom to realize it's not on me to try to be good enough. It's not on me to try to be a good Christian. It's not on me. It, it, it's the Spirit of God working in us. We just surrender to him, and we trust what God says he will do, that he will do it. We simply, like Abraham, just... Have faith and believe what God says he will do. Look at verse 10 here. For all who rely on works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed be everyone, be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law, for the righteous shall live by what? Faith. But the law is not of faith, rather the one who does them shall live by them. Paul really simplifies it down here. He's been beating it over our head. He's trying to get it clear to them. He's like, okay, I'm going to simplify this down. If you're placing your hope in the law, then you are cursed. There's no hope in the law. If you think without grace and trusting and faith in Jesus that you can just do good things, and God's going to say, hey, they did it. They reached the meter, the, the, the goal. They get to be saved now. If you think that's the way it works, Paul says, you're cursed. You're going to be miserable. You're going to be tired because you're, you, you, you're never going to get there. And I, in fact, the more you try to earn that, the more pride you have and the lower you go down and the higher that bar goes. That you can't get there on your own. And so Paul's like, listen, you're cursed. I hope not, but I believe there might be some people here or watching online that's kind of under that curse right now, where they're like, I'm just trying to please God, and I can't do it. I keep messing up. You know, I do good for a couple days, and then the weekend comes, and man, I just lose it. Like, well, you're cursed. You're under a curse. And you might say, well, isn't obeying the law good? Yes, it is, but it isn't what saves the law is there to show you that you're not good enough. The Ten Commandments that we look at, those are high standards. And we can't do them perfectly. And that's the whole point, is that we would see the Ten Commandments and see that we are failures and we can't do it on our own. And then Jesus would enter and say, but I can and so our faith comes and we place our faith in Jesus, the one who did it perfectly, the one that lived perfectly and paid our price on the cross because we can't obey the commandments. We can't obey the law. If we try to, we're cursed. But if we rest and have faith in Christ, there's freedom. I heard somebody say this one time and it really hit home with me. You could have a flight, getting ready to go on vacation, business trip or whatever, and you're rushing to the airport to, to make a flight. There could be one guy 
that missed the flight by one second. Got through security, ran down there, and the door shuts, and the plane starts backing up. Missed it by one second, but you're really close, right? You were almost there. And then you could have a guy that really overslept and missed the plane by an hour. You know where both guys are? Not on the plane. So you get what I'm saying here is that it doesn't matter if I barely missed the mark or if I missed the mark tons, we missed the plane. We're not on the plane with everybody else flying to Florida, right? Like we're, we've missed the plane and we are not going to be able to get on that plane in ourselves because it doesn't matter what we do. We can't get on it. Jesus is the one that gives us access to get on that plane. He's the one that showed up early, right? Like he was there waiting for us. Like I know Nathan's going to be late and I don't know if it's going to be by a second, which he does, or if it's going to be by a whole day that he's going to miss the plane, but I know he's going to miss it. I know he's going to miss the mark. I'll be there. I'm going to have his boarding pass ready to go. I'm going to already cleared security, and he's just going to be able to walk in with me. It doesn't matter how we miss the mark. Some people, man, they get so stuck in themselves, like, man, I've done some really bad stuff. And other people are like, well, you know, I've went to church my whole life, and I feel pretty good. You both missed the mark. It doesn't matter if you missed it by a second or you missed it by an hour. You missed it, and none of us can make that mark. Let me close with this as we read these last couple of scriptures just to give us this strength and hope. But Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree, so that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. I want us to get this because this is, I'm telling you, this is powerful. So we're trying to obey the law, and under the law, we are cursed because we can never obey the law perfectly. We are cursed, we are broken, we're destined for hell. That's just how it is. And this tells us, and it, just, it blows my mind if you can understand this, that Jesus then lived perfect. He is the Son of God was in there, and everything was created by him and through him and for him in the beginning. He's existed with God. He is God. He comes to earth, lives a perfect human life, and then becomes a curse. He takes the curse that we are under, and he takes it on himself. That blows my mind. What love that is, what perfection and beauty that is in Christ that he would say, hey, listen, they messed it up. They missed the mark. They missed the plane. They should have arrived earlier. They should have done more. Guess what? We should have. We should be perfect. We should be better. We should do better. We should obey the law, but we don't. And God's love is so great that he would send a perfect sacrifice, holy and blameless, to become a curse so that we could have freedom. That God's wrath that's due us, that should be poured out and just obliterate us, is then poured out on Christ. Now, I don't know where you guys are today. Maybe you're struggling with doubt. I'm going to fill you in on a secret here that most church people don't say because they don't want anybody to know. We all struggle with doubts. You're not alone. Doubt's a real thing, and it creeps in so smoothly, you don't even realize it's there to usually, after a while, of feeling it. So maybe you're struggling with doubt. Am I saved? Am I worthy? Am I, am I good enough? And maybe you're stuck in sin, and you're like, I don't know why I do it. I don't know why I keep doing it. Like Paul said, he's like, I, I don't do what I should do, and I do what I should, shouldn't do. He's like, I don't know why I am the way I am. I want you to ask yourself these questions. Who saved you? You're struggling with doubt? How did you receive salvation? Who saved you? Was it by your goodness? Was it by being awesome that God was like, I'm going to save, fill in your name? No. So you're like, I don't know if I'm saved. Well, are you the one that, that saved yourself? Because if you're the one that thinks you saved yourself, you're not saved. But if you trusted and placed faith in Christ... He's the one that saved you. He did it. Not you. Not your works. Not your deeds. Not following the Ten Commandments. It was all Christ. So who saved you? How did you receive that salvation? It's from Christ. Faith in Christ. 
struggling with doubt, struggling with sin, struggling in your life with maybe depression, I want to tell you, who sustains you? Are you tired of trying to sustain yourself? Well, who sustains you? It is Christ. It is the Spirit of God that where the Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom. You want freedom in your life. Rest in the fact that it is not on you to sustain your salvation. It's not on you to save yourself. It is all Christ. And this, who works in you? I don't know if I have the strength to not sin anymore. I don't have the strength to live like a Christian should live. You don't. But the Spirit of God, when you know Christ, He gives you His Spirit, and the Spirit of God knows how to live holy because He is holy. And so trust in the Spirit of God to lead you. Get in the Word of God. Block out the voices of the world and the enemy and even yourself. Hear the whisper of God and the Spirit of God speaking to you that wants to lead you in holiness. I encourage you, it's all God. It's so funny because I can't remember exactly what it was, but Macy, she takes care of our social media and she shared a memory from a year ago and it was something just along those lines as well. It's all God. It's all about God. It's all about Christ. It's all about Jesus. It's all Jesus. And I want to reiterate that to us today. That's what Paul is saying here. He's like, you don't have to do all these things to be saved because it is by Christ that you are saved. It is all God. It is all Christ. So I want to invite you, if you don't know Jesus, man, what a better day than today. There is no better day than right now in this moment to trust in Christ and realize, maybe for the first time, clearly to realize that you don't have to earn it. You don't have to hold it and sustain it. And that God wants to work in you. And that sets us free of legalism and religion And it leads us into a relationship with a father that just holds us and loves us despite us, despite our problems, despite our issues. And he holds us and he's never letting go. Some of you all need to hear that today. So if you don't know Jesus and you want to know that father, you want to know that presence, that freedom that's in the spirit of God, we can share that with you today. And actually right now, you don't even need me to help you. You just tell God what you're feeling, that I need you, Jesus, that I need you, that I can't do this on my own. I'm a sinner and you are holy and I believe Jesus died for me. And then he resurrected to life to bring me life. Man, I'm telling you, you can just cry out to him like a, like a child does for their father. So I'm gonna pray for us. And as we worship some more, you're welcome to continue praying. You're welcome to stand and worship in joy. I'm going to be right here. And actually, if you need prayer, we haven't been doing this lately because of COVID, but I don't even care. I'll be right here. And if you need prayer, if you want to know more about Jesus, I'll be here waiting on you to pray with you. Other people will step forward if we need that. And then actually, even after the service, if you're a little worried and embarrassed to step forward, after the service, just come talk to me. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your goodness. God, that while we were yet sinners, that you sent Christ to become a curse, to be cursed, that cursed is those that are hanged on a tree, that he became a curse, took on the wrath due us on himself so that we can know freedom and know you. So God, I pray for those that are in bondage today to sin in their life, God, that they would see that it is you that saves, it's you that sustains, it's you that is work in us, not them. Pray for anybody that doesn't know you, God, that they've never went all in and placed their faith in you, God, that today would be the day that they would say, I need you, Jesus. I can't do this on my own, and I know that you can. And God, for the Christian that's been walking this life for a little while, and they feel stagnant, they feel plateaued, they feel like they they need something to boost them, I pray that right now these questions that Paul gives to us, that would wake them up, shake them awake, and see that it is all God, and it has always been God. We thank you for Jesus. We pray this in his name. Amen. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation. I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. And through the darkness, 
your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written Jesus Christ my living So great a mercy And what heart could find of such boundless grace And the God of ages set down from glory To wear my sin and bear my shame Sing it out, the cross is spoken The cross is spoken I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me His own. And beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Sing hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free, hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me, you have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Sing that again, hallelujah. And hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free, hallelujah. You have broken every chain, there's salvation in your Jesus Christ, living hope. <laughs> Sorry about that. out. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. And out of the silence, the roaring lion, it's he cleared the grave, has no claim on me. Sing that again. Then came. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. And your very body began to breathe out of the silence. In the roaring light, she cleared the grave, has no claim on you. Jesus, yours is the victory. Oh, and hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. And you have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, in Jesus Christ, my living hope. In hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death is lost, its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Lift up a shout this morning, lift it up. We thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 
Praise the one set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Can we sing verse 2 again? I just really love those lyrics. It says, who can imagine how great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. Come on, do you guys believe that this morning? Get that cool? We sing that one more time. Just that verse too. Who could imagine so great a mercy? And what heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. Declare this, the cross. The cross is spoken and I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me His own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Father, we just glorify you right now. We just thank you, God, that you have been working and you are still working and you will continue working in our lives. As God, you've saved us, you sustain us, and you work in us. God, we praise you, God, and we thank you for what Jesus did for us on the cross, that we were so undeserving, but because of your great love, at the right time, you would send Christ to die for us. Thank you, God, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, I'm so thankful that Ben and Haley Ottolini with us today. I mean, come on, like... That was amazing, and I'm going to try to have them back as many times as we possibly able to. They, they're, they lead worship at another church, but I'm going to try to steal them as often as I can. Uh, but I'm just so thankful for them. They're great friends, and like I, I know if you would like to talk to Haley more about what she's doing with her uh, nonprofit, uh, the Mosaic Initiative, is that what it is? Mosaic Initiative, uh, really cool, and I'm hoping our church can even partner in that as well, but she, I'm sure she'd love to talk to you if you have a heart for that, which you should because you're a Christian. Uh, um, talk to her about that. It, it's amazing. If, if you want more information about our church, getting involved, serving, life groups, membership, whatever it is, uh, fill out an online connect card. Uh, those are, it's on our Facebook, it's on our website. If you're watching online, there should be a link right above the stream where you can click that. Let us know how you're doing. If you need, have questions, and maybe you just need a prayer and you want somebody to talk to you, we'll try to be in t- contact with you and do that. Uh, if you'd like to worship through giving, uh, you can do that online as well with several different ways on our website, and, and it, a lot of different ways we provide to do that, as well as if you want to give in person, we have the box that's on your right as you leave this room. You can worship through giving as well. Uh, we're excited about what God's going to do this year. Here is we, like we've said, we're supporting some missionaries now that are getting ready to leave, and they're secure in a secure mission field. So I can't even tell you where they're going, especially over the internet. Uh, if you want to know more about that, I can talk to you off of stream and tell you more about them. Hopefully, at some point, we'll be able to cut the stream and share it with everybody at once. But it's really awesome, and God's going to do even more through our church. So we're excited about it. And if you have any questions about salvation, what we talked about, anything, I'd love to talk with you as well. Baby, am I forgetting anything? All right, I did good. All right, well, we love you all. Thank you so much for watching online. Thank you for joining in with us. We hope you guys have a great week.